Snot's album Ethereal. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> 35 minutes long, 14 songs long. It's, it's a fun day. And Snot has been sort of interesting. He is sort of grown a little bit pretty rapidly after having releases i think his first like album release tragedy was in 2020 but i heard a little bit about him in like 2019 ish or so Mm -hmm. but each of these albums have sort of like popped up for being like okay wow this is a rapper with some real sort of like panache to him um i've heard some of his previous stuff it's pretty interesting and he's gotten quite a lot of listeners and quite a rabid following for you know trying things in and out there and in doing the lead up to doing this review, I did what I try not to do, which is read some uh, music coverage of artists. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. And apparently there's this thing about having an 808s album, which has nothing to do with the instrument, like like 808s as a sound or as a synthesizer instrument. But the 808s album for this generation of rappers is when you referencing Kanye West's 808s and Heartbreaks record when you do like an electronic pivot or like shift in your sound um to like throw off fans or surprise fans now or about video game beats I'm I'm old enough to remember that people hated 808s and Heartbreak when I it came out too. and and it didn't even like you know a couple artists here and there say it was influential for them but compared to other Kanye works over the years hasn't aged that much better compared to like beautiful dark twisted fantasy graduation some people were even coming around to yeezus more than they are to um 808s and heartbreak that being said all my cards the table even though i don't like kanye west that 808s and heartbreak wasn't that bad when it came out um i thought it was a decent i thought it was a good album i don't think it topped graduation um, yeah, definitely not. It was just a before. full embrace of like um, the 808 sound synthesizers and auto tune, yep, which yep. made Jay Z's Death of Auto Tune, which came out a year later, just super funny. <laughs> but um, that 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 was a real Uncle Rat beef. That was that was a Cold War right there. That'd be a good um, right. audio face bonus. The Jay Z Kanye West Cold War. <laughs> That's but, man. Um, the that's all to say that Ethereal is billed as being like this electronic pivot, but If you get your head out of all of that marketing nonsense, what you get is an album here with a decent amount of features, a mix of songs that are like bangers and songs that do a little bit of experimental trap and B kind of thing. Overall, you get a pretty solid trap album in 2022 that I was not expecting to have. I was expecting to kind of crap all over this, but this was pretty decent. I was expecting to shit all over this, like me too, because, you know, we have a very... Small High bar in 2022. Fuse. Oh, we have a small fuse for bad trap. If it's bad trap, I'm just not going to go into it. And our scale is YB better or YB not better. YB is not even fucking touching this with his ton. Like this is, this is actually a really really good album. The first part, the first song, you know, is the intro of my world. Um, and it's like a nice little spoken word piece. It's slow, it kind of like just sets the tone for the for the record. But then the second song, Dojo with ASAP Rocky, is just in your face, banner of a trap song. Fucking love this track. Like you just hear it and you're like, this 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 goes hard as hell. Yeah. I absolutely love it. I really Doja love Cat it. for the record was like, please don't involve me in this. <laughs> so she doesn't want to be involved in this and we also shouldn't make light of this thing rappers do where they just like throw out oh yeah i slept with this like artist here and they're like no <laughs> but nevertheless uh but i'm gonna song. make fun of alt-right doja cat anyways so you know whatever yeah um, no I- one's winning in this battle here but you do with asap rocky get like a banger of a track and there are some like major bangers here but then you have tracks like blue moon that follow after that which i'm not to cut you off song but i think you're gonna get into like the variety you get there I was going to say that, yeah. Like, with Blue Moon right after, it slows it down, and you get into, like, this, you know, your your neo-pop trap and B style, and it's like, whoa. It's indie. It's straight yeah, up indie. And, and then you, with those three tracks, right, you have My World, Doja, and Blue Moon, featuring Teddy Jones and Asaph Rocky. Um, those three tracks are all very, very different, but they still go together. It's still cohesive, which is honestly very difficult to do within this genre. Like, you can make it, you can do all these different sounds, but a lot of people, when they do that, they make the record about 18 hours long, and it's like, it just gets washed out. But within this, you know, short frame, 34 minutes, you really get to hear those sounds. And that's the one that really got me, you know, when Teddy Jones came on, on the future, that's what got me into this record. I'm like, wow, this is incredible. 
Because, yeah, that's when it turned into an indie song. It's fantastic. I really, really liked it. Also, all the songs are just under three minutes, but it gives you enough to where you can enjoy it, but not. it's not. It's that perfect middle ground where it's not short where you want to go longer, but it's not too long to where it gets drowned out, especially for having so many different sounds. It's great in that mixture because then, example, like after Blue Moon, you have Go, which is, you know, another hard trap song right after, but it has like this really cool chime beat thing in the background where you're trying to like throw in some different electronic sounds and things here and there, but it still fits in the That's something that I, I really like. Yeah. I thought throughout the entire record, like, and you have some pretty thoughtful, um, like features here that you wouldn't usually get. You have Trippy Red, which you get here a lot of times. You have Juicy J and Joey Badass, which mm -hmm. Joey Badass I haven't seen in a while. But Kevin Abstract was a pretty interesting feature to pick from. You know, Brockhampton and the people yep. from Brockhampton are going to have a lot more time on their hands now. So, um, <laughs> That's very true. Yeah, I thought that was a good mix. And then the song Fighting Me right under the Joey Badass one, I felt was like a really cool, almost like Tyler the Creator, Amine kind of beat um, yeah, bouncing around thing where it's kind of chimey and fun. I was really impressed with not only, again, like you said with the first three songs, not just the versatility of Snot, but being able to make it a cohesive record. A sound where the songs like play through back to back. You can pull the songs out and go, I like these tracks individually. You can play the record through and go, this, there's art to it. There's quality to it. And it's so, so difficult to find that and trap and rap, a genre where, especially right now, you just see like this mixtape angle of I'm gonna throw in a bunch of songs together, yep. quantity over quality. Exactly. And the same thing with like a lot of the features too. A lot of features can be phoned in or this or that just to get plays, you know, unless it's 21 Savage. But then you have a lot of people that just come on there and just be like, oh, okay, you know, industry shit, whatever. But in these, everybody in there that's a feature, they fit well, they're cohesive in the project, they sound like they're not just phoning it in, they're they're having, you know, a distinct reason to hop on those tracks, and they're great. When I was listening to it, um, some tracks like um, Go, Doja, Alone, Trippy Wed, like to me, the production of it reminds me a lot of Playboy Cardi, but it sounds like if Playboy Cardi didn't have the voice of a scratched up xylophone, then that's what it would sound like. So it's a good way, like, of a really, really hard and cool production, but actual somebody who can really rap and have that. So I, I, I'm really impressed with the record. Yeah, I, overall, I think this is really good. Perfect timing, good a lot of mix. This is one of my, I'll have to listen to it a little bit more to make sure whether or not I like, you know, elevate it up to like trap album of the year in that category. But I it, love the cohesion of this. This yeah, is definitely yeah, running up it, there. It, it, was, it was a big surprise. I was not expecting to, to, to enjoy it as much as I did. Yeah. Um, Arbitrary scale this week. We love our arbitrary scales on Audio Face. We do arbitrary scales because we just did a review. We told you that we liked Snot and we were gonna like do not sneak on this kid. This is gonna like be one of the top rappers in the game if he keeps this yeah. up. All right. That was our review. If we put a letter to that or a number to that, you would just compare it with some other review and go, oh, why why why'd you give this number to Snot and this number to YB? Does YB actually better? I don't know. Uh, for the record. We we also do all rank all trap albums this year by saying whether YB is better or YB is not better. Sean, what's your take? Um, uh, YB definitely not better, but with bowling Agreed. alleys, YB not better. Bowling alleys, is, yes. This is this is good, like Wesley Glanes. It's like a solid, like Wesley Glanes. Like it's a good, like you're gonna have like your bowling leagues in there you're gonna have your old people bowling leagues you can have your young people bowling leagues but you still got an arcade there and there's like a turn arcade too so it's got a lot of stuff it's got like three air hockey tables pool tables street fighter what you know and the whole bunch and the beer is cheap that's good this this is a uh, java lanes down in long beach uh oh. real ones will remember java lanes before that's they the tore that shit down a long time man shit <laughs> i had to remember and make sure i like is that just like a um, no, I Bernstein like Bears effect that I did in my head or no, <laughs> Java Lanes was a real thing they had like tiki's and it was mm -hmm. all 70s style they had like a pointy ass roof you um, know there's hella asbestos in that roof oh extreme, uh, popcorn <laughs> ceilings and everything uh, <laughs> yeah. but hey, it was uh, really easy to get blood off the, <laughs> blood off the lane so it was a nice reliable bowling alley of course we're referencing the um, thing that happened with baby earlier this week, has how arbitrary scales tend to work